Hello everybody and welcome to another Transformers third party knockoff review. Now I don't very often do knockoffs of third parties. Uh, third parties struggle as it is. So when they get bootlegged I do tend to try and avoid them. But a lot of you guys requested this video and TF Direct had it on sale. Uh, I chose the loose option so I didn't get the packaging and I saved on the overall cost which was grand. It's arrived and first impressions is it's actually pretty darn good. Now you have to understand this is made by Jinbao. They are a very reputable factory in China and it's called Into the Sky. And it is of course the knockoff interpretation of Feral Rex from Masterminds Creations, also known as Predator King. And of course, we also get a Fella Saber in here, aka Catilla. So, first impressions it is by no means anywhere near the plastic quality that we get from Masterminds Creations. But that being said, it's not terrible. If you're used to the likes of the oversized Superion combiner, for example, this floors that mold. It absolutely knocks it out of the park. I would say the plastic quality is more comparable to the likes of a Tonka toy. Uh, it's almost as good as the Combiner Wars Devastator, just to give you guys an idea of that sort of feel. Now, the main issue I have with these guys is you can tell they have cut corners. Things just don't seem to want to stay in place as well as they should. You lose things like wrist articulation. Bovis and Fortis have huge oversized balloon heads. Um, not really sure what they were doing with that. Even Leodux's head is much bigger than it should be. It's just slightly out of scale. Don't get me wrong, if somebody done a third party, fourth party possibly, <laughs> uh, selection of heads to fit these bodies, they'd be really, really good. The plastic does feel a little bit more hollow on them. But you're not left with that kind of greasy feel on your fingers. And I could quite comfortably push this off a shelf and it would bounce. Taking a closer look at Bovis and Fortis, aka Tantrum and Headstrong, also known as Phantom Cattle and Happening Rhinoceros, I think that's how it translates. Um, as you can see, they are very, very similar to the Mastermind Creations design, but you can see they are really hollowed out, especially around the arms and the legs, and those heads are really, really ballooned. All of the figures come with pretty much their original accessories, and again, even the guns and swords are oversized. I never really saw the point in the Predacons having guns, it doesn't strike me as the sort of thing they would have, being kind of animalistic and instinctual predators. But hey, we get them in the set, so it's good to use. Now, transformation for Bovis and Fortis are pretty much identical. Albeit, Fortis does have an additional twist at the waist. Uh, so the back section is up so we can mount the gun slightly differently. So let's get Bovis transformed. First port of call is to remove all of the weapons and the backpack section. Come around to the hands, looking at that empty space in the arm there. You want to just fold these hands inwards, like so. If you come around to the back of the arm here, just untab this section here and bring this down. Bring the arm section up and there's a latch here which just pegs in. And then this section comes under and if you look there's a peg here and these two tabs here, they are going to peg under the arms like so. And as you can see, this is going to form the front legs. Once you bring those upwards, so this section is going to be facing down. Come around to the head and rotate the ball head around. Pull down the ball's mouth slightly and that allows us to flip the robot head fully up into the jaw of the bull. 
and then just sort out those horns. I think even the bull's head is slightly oversized. Slide these thigh sections around and they're gonna tab in at the front here, like so. Rotate the torso around. Make sure these red bits are clear. They do tend to get stuck and dragged around with the torso. In fact, they're actually a bit of a pain in the backside, to be honest with you. Uh, they are going to just sit on the underside here for now. They eventually fold down and just tuck in behind these legs. Come round to here. You want to untab this leg section on both legs and just pull that up out of the way. Again with this leg, pull it up and out of the way. And this section here is going to untab. Come round to this red section, rotate it, and then swivel it round. And that's going to pivot. And there is a tab just here and a tab there, and that's going to tab on. That now allows us to flip the leg up and over. And this whole section here slides into the gap that's just made. So let's slide that in like so. These undersides are meant to tab in here, just close those off. These are very temperamental and they don't really want to stay pegged together. You can push the hind leg sections together as well. Again, this section really doesn't hold as well as it should. Just pop this section down and pop this section down. Come to the legs. And again, we're just gonna unfold these legs flipping them around and tabbing the hind leg sections in and squaring up the feet. Now, due to the fact that Bovis' section here is reversed, I can't actually get his gun uh, backpack section on. You place this on here, but these are hitting on here before this gets the chance to peg in. So, it just will not clip in fully. So, I mean, it's literally balanced on there. So you get the idea, but I don't think that's good enough. Uh, it's a clearance issue. I'm not sure if anybody else is having the same clearance issue with this. And I could avoid it by flipping the torso round like I did with Fortis and using the holes underneath here and lining those up with these holes. It's entirely up to yourselves, but... Uh, it's a downside to buying a cheaper plastic KO. Things don't quite tab together properly and the length of the pegs isn't quite enough. That being said, the articulation in his ball mode is pretty good. You can look up and down, left and right. The mouth does open and close. The horns go forward and back. The shoulders can come out and in, up and down. We have a bend at the elbow. We have a rotation there, we have a ball joint so we can go forward and back, and we have pivot on the feet so we can get a ridiculously wide stance. I mean, it's probably one of the most articulated beast modes in any Transformer I have seen. Scale-wise, although not aesthetically so, these are definitely masterpiece. They are massive! And for the call of the primitive fans, here he is with the oversized Grimlock. Next up, let's take a look at Felisaber and Tigress, aka Rampage and Catilla. Again, these both use exactly the same mold, only with some re-sculpting and recoloration. I absolutely love how the Felisaber's eyes just glow. Articulation on these guys is pretty darn good. The head looks up and down left and right with no hindrance there at all. The shoulders can go all the way round on a soft ratchet. We can come out to the sides. We can rotate. We've got a double bend at the elbow. Nice extra extension on the elbow as well. And like I previously mentioned, we do only have forwards and backwards motion on those hands. There is no rotation on the wrist at all. Uh, we can rotate at the upper bicep, but it really doesn't help those hands. The waist rotates quite freely. The legs can come that far forward, that far back, out to the side. We have rotation at the knee, and we have a nice 90 degree bend at the knee. The feet go forwards and backwards, 
a hinge outwards, and we also got a great amount of pivot. To give you an idea of scale, here they are with a seeker. Most people own some sort of variation of the seeker mold. These really are a fantastic size. Transformation for both these kitty cats are pretty much identical. What we're going to do, we're going to start off with the head. You want to just flip that backwards, lift this chest section up, and this whole section here actually pulls forward as well. It's on a slightly separate hinge and does a move upwards and then move the head up independently, like so. You want to bring these shoulders up and over and then rotate the head around like that. Bring the arm down and this whole section here is going to form the front legs of the tiger. To bring that forwards, pull open the claw section and tuck those hands away in there like that and then bring those down. To get it more cat-like, you just want to angle the legs so they kind of come in and use both sections of that double jointed elbow. You may notice mine's a little bit wibbly wobbly on this peg up here. Don't really know how I can tighten that. It's not overly a problem, but it's a problem nonetheless. Bring these red sections around to the back like so. Rotate the waist around. Come to this back section here. Just untab the legs, bring that out. And we're just gonna untab this back section here. That's gonna fold out pretty much like we did with Bovis and Fortis. As you can see here, this section folds back on itself and tabs in like so. You're gonna to wanna to fold these legs up and over like so. Pop these sections inwards and then we can just tab those together. Take a look at the legs. You've got this section here. You want to flip that section up. That now allows us to get to the hind legs. Fold those down, bring those down and then hide that section back off again by closing that off. And then pull this section over the back. Flip open the tail section and you've got a really nice option to arch the back with these guys. So there we have them. Articulation wise, the head can go up and down, the mouth can open and close. The top of my head does have a tendency to pop off. <laughs> Not ideal. The arms can go up, they can go out to the side. We have a bend and another bend on the elbow, very cat-like. Unfortunately, this paw is pinned, so there is no ball joint, so we can't get a really deep paw on there. The waist does rotate still. We do have that up and down curvation on the back there. The legs can come out, up rounds, bend, bend, and we do have a ball on the hind feet. And again, to give you an idea of scale, here he is with Thundercracker. Next on the review slab is Leodux, aka Razorclaw. Also known as Pioneer Lion. <laughs> uh, this guy is possibly the strangest looking when he's fully equipped with all of his accessories. He, there's just too much going on, way too much going on. And as you can instantly tell, his head is too big. Leodux is an extremely large bot even towering over the likes of the Seekers. And I mean almost gutter big. Articulation is pretty good, although he does suffer severely for not having wrist rotation because his hands are in the upwards position. That is a real oversight there. The head can go up and down. Really great range there, freely left and right. Again, it's a really good sculpt with some nice paint applications, but it really does need to be a fraction of that size. The arms can come out, you can go up and down. We do have a rotation. We have a bend and a bend. You can switch the arms up and around using full range of that double joint. 
but you can't do anything with those hands. If they'd have done these in two separate pieces and put a hinge in there, it would have fixed a lot of problems. The waist does rotate. It's a very, very stiff friction joint. Side skirts do go up and down. We can move the legs forward on a soft ratchet and backwards they come out to the side on a very strong ratchet. We have upper thigh swivel. We have a bend at the knee. We have a bend at the lower knee. Mainly most of that is used for the predaking formation. The bend at the actual lower knee does give us approximately 90 degrees. Come down to the feet and they move forwards and back. You've got a little bit of motion there on the toes and you can use the hind legs to balance those large feet. Unfortunately, there is no pivoting. Right, let's get him transformed up. First port of call, flip open the backs of the arms, flip in the hands and close those off. You want to lift out this section here and this is gonna go up to the top here and the head is going to just collapse inwards and that's gonna go up nicely. Make sure the black peg is facing upwards. Rotate this section forwards and we'll just have the paw unpegged and facing forwards. That's pretty much how we're gonna have the lion's hands for now. You can lift up this head section and there's a red peg underneath there. That's gonna peg into the back of Razor Claw's robot head. He says like so positioning the head nicely into place. Come around to the underside of the feet and just applying moderate pressure, push those toes up and out of the way. You have to compress the thigh section into the insides of the legs. It's very, very stiff, but I found the easiest way of doing this is to go to a carpeted floor and just give the base of the foot a little tap on the carpeted floor and it will easily slide down. It's just the initial time you do it, the first time it is a little bit stiffer than normal and bring those legs in and we can tab those in together like so. Unclip the back legs, fold this section around, you can bring the feet around there. Next stage is to bring in this shield section. As you can see, I've actually folded it up already. If we just untab this section here, Basically, it's like this at the moment. You want to just fold that over, fold that over, turn it around, and that's going to tab in together. So you want something that looks like that. Make sure the waist is rotated around like so, and then bring the circular section up and round, and you want to just fold that down and collapse it back on itself like that. I can then bend the legs down to that position, bring in our shield section, and that's going to tab in with those pegs just on there like so. Straighten up the other leg, bring that down, sort out the feet, and there we have him in his gorgeous lion mode. Just added his tail section onto the back there. It just pegs in between these legs. Uh, I'm still not a fan of how wibbly wobbly these uh, leg sections are. They don't push in and tab in. That's a very, very loose joint, as you can see. But it is a massive, massive lion. I absolutely love the face sculpt. It's taken me to get a huge oversized version to realize just how gorgeous the Leo Ducks mold actually is. The shoulder cannons do move up and down. They do peg in to the top there. The head is kind of fixed now that we've pegged it into the back of the neck, um, but it does move left and right. The jaws do open, chomp, chomp, chomp. The arms move forwards and back. They can come out to the side. We do have pivot on those paws and we have a double bend at the elbow. The waist does rotate still, but it's very minimalistic. There's no tilt like we got with Tigris. 
The back legs, as I mentioned, are very loose. They do swivel quite substantially. I mean, we can kind of tab those back in, but it's designed to kind of come upright like so. We do have a bend at the hind leg and a pivot on the foot. And just to give you an idea of scale, here he is being ridden by Wheelie. And here he is with Thundercracker. As far as beast formers go, he's a big guy. And finally, my personal favourite of the bunch, Talon, a.k.a. Dive Bomb. Man. This is a beautiful design. I absolutely love this figure. With his Chinese name loosely translating to the Commander, he really is a glorious piece of plastic. The wingspan is phenomenal. I've just mounted his rifle on the back there. He is just genuinely a pleasure to behold. Not a fan of the way the hands, again, are mounted. The swords and accessories do tend to kind of stretch out those fingers. Um, I think they literally just stretch this out and unplug those hands, because it can really do with a set of articulated wrists. The face sculpt is pretty okay. It's definitely not the worst. Fairly straight, clean paint applications. Definitely, definitely my favourite figure. The articulation, we have nice range up, nice range down, left and right. The shoulders can go up and down on a nice soft ratchet and come out, rotate. We do have a double hinged elbow. Again, very hollow arms with Wrists that go in and out. The waist does rotate in two places. One there and one there. You are hindered somewhat by the bird kibble at the back. Legs can come out, out, rotate at the knee, 90 degree bend. And we have up and down, ball jointed, feet allowing for a nice pivot. The wings themselves can also go upwards and downwards, in and out, and all of the individual feathers can also be pulled apart. It is recommended for the transformation that we remove his backpack, but I do warn you now, this peg here is extremely tight, and it is a job to pull that out. Come round to the hands, bend those in, straighten up the arm, and if you can see here, we're going to use the entire double joint of the elbow there, fold this back on itself, and that's going to tab into the side. Just a word of warning for you, the plastic on my tail section here had actually overcome it, it was actually hadn't been shaved off correctly. As you can see, it's now damaged this section here when you tried to move it, and if we go to the underside, it's actually broken there, so I'm going to have to glue that. Uh, I think they just hadn't trimmed this orange off enough, and as you move it, it was just causing damage. So please bear that in mind. Come round to the legs, and you want to rotate the legs around. Mine also has a rattle. There's something loose, something broken inside there that I can't seem to find, whether it's a loose screw or something, but it's most frustrating. Rotate the lower waist around. Come around to the back of the leg, you want to open up this section like so, and do the same with this side. Come around to this side panel, this is going to fold in on itself, you want to flip those around, fold that off. The leg is going to collapse like it did with all the others, and just fold in like so. Come around to the back of the leg and close that section off, come around to these kind of claw feet and just extend those down like this. Come around to the head, you want to extend the head up, pop the faceplate inside and bring this beak section kind of down like so. We now have the yellow section at the front and the gold sections at the base of the legs. Um, I like to keep my legs together, but according to the instructions, the official transformation is to have the legs split 
open to give him a better range of motion in eagle mode. You can now bend him forwards and just bring in the wings. Just plug those in and there he is. Never really a fan of his alt mode. I think his bot mode is definitely a lot better. But hey, he does transform. <laughs> it's just an amazing toy. Definitely my favourite of the bunch. A very, very unfortunate uh, about the tail section and the breakage and stress marks. You just have to be careful. This is a cheap toy it's not made for an adult collector but you know it's still got a good amount of playware to it i mean just look at these guys all together that is insane so much plastic there and that's not even his final form <laughs> the reason most of you are ordering this product is to form a massive feral rex or predator king so let's get him transformed up into his combined form first things first you want to come round to the back open up these legs and remove the tail move the waist section extend the leg fully Come round to this side leg section here. If they're already collapsed, brilliant. If they're not, bring them in, collapse them in, fold this leg down and rotate the feet around. So you're left with legs that look like this. Come up to the arm section. You want to bring this all the way up. So it's folded in and at the top like so. Bring that round. And you're gonna fold these arms around and under fold this section down and you see there's a tab just under the arm there that's going to slide and tab inwards unplug the main from the head bring this section forwards and you want to bring this back section backwards so this whole section with the predaking head lifts up and out rotate this head around so it's now the leoduck head going back inside Rotate the Predaking head around and it will now slide through the collar section allowing this section to come back down inside the chest cavity. We can then collapse the Leo head inwards. Rotate the waist section around making sure that this black clip section is out of the way. Just twist this all the way around come around to the back here this clip section is going to lock this torso into place bringing that down and pegging that in like so we can then bring in our crotch shield extending it out like so you're actually going to put it on pretty much like a diaper it literally wraps around the underside of the crotch the tab at the front here plugs into the front of predaking's groin come around to the back you've got these two tabs here and they're going to plug into the back sections here and that's what the nappy looks like on <laughs> it's, it's pretty cool it's pretty cool it's got a fair bit of uh, overhang underneath there but the gap and overhang issue is completely rectified by recollapsing those legs come around to the shoulder can and bring that forward and extend it fully Next up, I'm going to be using a dive bomb as the arm. I'm not a fan of Fella Saber as an arm. I prefer the original configuration. What I do, you want to turn the head around, come around to the feet, flip those up and around. The fists that are stored within the feet, which attach the top of Bovis and Fortis, are literally like so. You literally just pop those in uh, hands are really simplified don't like the hands at all so we can pop the fist in there that just tabs in and we can then compress these two legs together detach the wing section because we're going to need that port to attach the arm that's going to go on. We're going to rotate that. This is now going to form the 
arm. Now the arms do just peg in. Uh, my joint is a little bit loose there, it does flop somewhat. And of course the hands themselves are interchangeable so you can decide which one you want on the left and which one you would like on the right. We also now have the option to place the wings on the back of Predaking. Tigress or Rampage, his transformation is pretty straightforward. Uh, again, it's just a matter of turning the head around. So you've got this section here which is going to form the arm. These arms here, they do bend back on themselves again and again. Fold them over and tab those pieces in and bring this section up. Come to the legs, this section here pulls out. You want to fold the foot around, that's going to collapse back in on itself. These legs are actually going to fold under, like so. Fold this section back up. And they are going to come all the way around, sliding in, tabbing in, and then locating securely. Flip the legs apart, because you want to bring the tail up and tab that in. And then we can bring the fist in and secure it between the legs. These sections around, they're going to form the wrist guards. And then line everything up and close it all back off. And again, just tab that into place. With Bovis and Fortis, the transformation to leg mode is pretty much identical. Your first port of call is to rotate the side of the leg section round, bend this section up. That's going to just rotate around. There's a tab on the back there. That's going to tab in on there on the foot, like so. And the leg is actually going to tab in to the side like so, and like so, and again at the bottom like this, keeping all of this section neat and tidy. You're going to want to split the legs, and you've got this groove section on the inside here. This is where the foot is going to go. Bring in the cannon section, lift up this tab section which plugged into the top, Bring this up, rotate it around, and bring that back down. As you can see, the curve does follow a set direction. You've got a tab here and a circle here. It corresponds with the hole here and the hole there. Just place that in. Push that in. Make sure everything lines up and that's sitting in there comfortably. And then close off the leg. This is what it now looks like with everything all squared off. Come round to the rhino or the bullhead, rotate them around and bring those to the front. Open up these arm sections and as we do so, rotate them down. Pull that out, rotate that down. And we can now come round to this section here and bring that up. God, that's such a tight joint. Just a little tip for you, use a screwdriver, <laughs> really does, really, really does help. With the legs around the back here, fold them down so they're in this position. And you'll notice there's a circle peg at the back there, that's going to peg in to the back of the leg. You can then rotate this section back up. The foot then comes up and over the shoulder. And like the other joints, you just slide them in and apply pressure until it's fully tabbed into place. Here he is fully combined. I'm a little bit underwhelmed. Uh, He's quite restrictive in comparison to the official Feral Rex. And he does have some flaws which have become apparent the more I've transformed him. Take a look at the Tigress. Where the waist joins to the upper torso, there's a single screw that goes in. And that's become threadbare. It's basically, they've over-tightened it and the bottom keeps coming off. I'm going to have to replace the screw with a new screw, maybe a slightly longer, sharper screw, and screw it back in. Or maybe put some glue or something around the screw first. But unfortunately, it does now keep falling off 
and that's very, very frustrating. He's not the best balanced of figures either, but he certainly does look the part. He looks super imposing. And let's not forget, we can actually make it a six forming bot by adding Catilla to the arm slot and having the entire dive bomb mounted on the back. Just to give you all an idea of scale, here's Megatron and his KO army. And here he is with Galvatron and Scourge. And lest us not forget that Predaking does of course come with a huge sword as well. Unfortunately, due to the wibbly wobbly arms, he can't really hold it upright. And the option to combine all of his guns into one very large arm mounted cannon. And the last size comparison, here he is with Titan Class Devastator. There's not a great deal in it. He's going to be about the same sort of size as Shuriking. Of course, we can extend Feral Rex's legs using Leodux's legs, but I think that kind of ruins that bulky proportion. Let's quickly cover his articulation before he falls apart. Uh, the head does move up and down, can move left and right with some tilt. You really do have to tread very lightly with him in his combined mode. It's actually the weakest of all of his modes. The arms are broken. <laughs> uh, the arm can move up and down, can move up and down. It should bend here, but I'm not going to twist this arm because it is really, really broken. And it does bend also outwards and inwards, making an elbow joint. Coming round to the waist, the waist does still rotate, although it is very much hindered. And it's a very inappropriate waist joint. It's way too high, in my opinion. The legs can still move forwards but they are really hindered by this nappy section. It does tend to kind of just pop in and out. Nothing really holds as firmly as it should. Legs do still bend at the knee, although the weight will generally bring the leg joint back down. The feet go forwards and backwards, and they do pivot left and right. And the arms come off now. I cannot get it back on. I'm gonna to have to adjust that screw. To summarize, ladies and gents, if, you are good at customizing. If you want a Predaking for display, then yes, this is definitely a good value option for you. If you want something that you can play around with, mess around with, then no. It's well made, but not that well made. There's just the nitpicking faults and the fact that it is falling apart left, right, and center. It's just the fact they haven't done it to the highest standard they're capable of. The plastic quality itself is remarkably well done, but due to over-tightening of screws and due to the oversized heads, etc., things just don't tab in as well as they should, and it really does limit him in his Predaking form. Once again, I would like to thank the guys over at TF Direct for making this review possible. I hope you've found it useful. If you have, give it a big thumbs up and feel free to subscribe. I'll be putting a full photo gallery of this guy once he's fixed up on benscollectibles.com. So if you have any particular comparison requests, please pop them in the comments section below and I'll try and get those up. And until next time, from myself and the Jinbeo into the sky, goodbye.